everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, this channel is going to be focused on my pregnancy. Um, I just finished my first trimester. I'm in my 15th week right now. And I want to tell you about my first trimester experience. And the rest of my channel um, is going to be focused on weekly updates or bi weekly updates on my pregnancy tips, my experience, and just following me. You following me through my pregnancy. I found out that I was pregnant on November 13th, 2016, and today is January 18th, 2017. Um, so, my first trimester experience. <sighs> um, this is my first pregnancy, and my whole body changed. <laughs> Creating a baby takes a toll on your body. Ah, like I wish I could say, oh, I am loving my journey so far. <laughs> well, it all started out with, before the nausea, I had a lot of pain in my left armpit. And first it started out with like a little lump. I thought it was like a shaving, shaving lump, you know, when you shave it so much you have the lumps under there and it's like infected but then it turned into two three the four and my whole armpit was covered in these huge bumps and when they popped they were pussy i didn't know what was going on it was it was painful i couldn't sleep on that side um my boyfriend was like uh <laughs> And he is studying to become a physician's assistant, so he tried to take care of it. And he, <laughs> he tried to pop it with a needle. And I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> but now that it's gone, um, there are some dark um, patches under there. Um, from, like scar tissue, no lumps or anything. It just is darker than my right armpit. So yeah, that was fun. Uh, and when I woke up, and my, when I actually got out of the bed, I got up and my boob, boobs shifted. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, please stop moving. And I don't really have big things, but oh gosh, they hurt. Around week five until like recent, like week 14, um, I would get morning sickness. Yeah, every morning I would wake up have to puke. It wasn't no food. I didn't puke up food. It's more of bile and maybe my prenatal vitamin. Some of it was yellow. Um, but I, to stop me from being sick, I had to eat right away. Like I would get up, eat, and then be all right for the next two hours. Every two hours I had to eat or I would get sick in the first trimester. Oh, and <laughs> Choosing what type of, what kind of food to eat was very hard too because I didn't feel like a lot of things. And I'm a vegetarian, so meat was out of the question. Um, so I had a lot of, what did I start with? Oh, I loved pizza to start out with. My boyfriend always had to get me pizza. <laughs> give me a slice, give me a slice pizza. Yes, don't eat my pizza, that's fine. And in my first trimester, I wanted spicy foods all the time. I stuck with my, um, what's it called? Chana sag. It's a type of Indian food with spinach, chickpeas, and spices. So good. With basmati rice. So I would order that and keep eating that. That satisfied me very well. And toward the end of my morning, morning sickness journey, like week 12 to, I still now, I, I still want hummus all the time. Um, hummus for carrots. I put hummus on a rice cake, and that satisfies me. Another symptom I had in my first trimester was sensitivity to smell. <laughs> um, I couldn't smell meat at all. It didn't matter what type of meat it was. I couldn't smell it, and my boyfriend's a meat eater, like pork. Um, trying to be kind. He did, he was kind and 
close the door when he was cooking his meat. I mean, he's a great cook, so. I wish I could be like, oh, that smells good, honey. I was like, close that door, open a window. <laughs> and after he would eat his meat, he would have to brush his teeth and use mouthwash because I would actually gag, like do that. <laughs> and it seems rude, but I couldn't help it. I could not help it. But he, he did uh, brush his teeth and everything. But an hour after he brushed his teeth, I would smell again on his breath. Oh, that's one of the hardest things. Oh, I felt, I felt bad. Huh? But yeah, he, he was kind and did brush his teeth. Another symptom of mine was headaches. Like sensitivity to light and movement if I move too fast or bent over I'll get like a migraine from just in a specific spot it's usually in the left side for sure but uh, um, I would have to I feel so explaining this stuff and in, in my boyfriend's eyes I feel selfish I like, I can't help it um, he I, I never liked lights to begin with like in the house, lights turned on. I usually like candles or, you know, like Christmas lights around the house. I'll have that. I don't know why I like low light. It makes me relax. And I, I had migraines before I was became pregnant. Not, not regularly, but I would get migraines sometimes. But now that I'm pregnant, I can't do light very well. Like this light for this video. Ugh. But. So t sometimes in the house, I would wear sunglasses if, so other people can turn on the lights. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Drama. Dramatic. I live in New York City, so the my first trimester in traveling on the subway. <sighs> so for me to get to work, I have to ride on the train an hour there an hour back so I always have plastic bags in my purse just in case I um, that was in my first trimester now it's I'm fine with the trains totally fine but in my first trimester maybe once a week I would puke on the on the train I would um, take my bag out like I know I know when it's about to come and I'll take it out, put my head kind of in my purse and in the bag, and I would puke. <laughs> I'll keep puking, and even when I even when I was finished, I'll still keep my head down until my stop, because I didn't want to look up and have people looking at me like, "Are you okay, sweetie? Oh, do you get some water?" I wouldn't. No, it's just I didn't want to tell them I'm pregnant. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, it's a little grouchy, but. Eh. Just imagine puking every day. It gets frustrating. So I just kept my head down. When my stop came, I would put the bag, tie it, still not looking at anyone, and just walk out. And something else I struggled with in my first trimester was overheating. Um, right now it's winter, and like big fluffy coats are necessary, but right now I get hot very easily and I'm wearing my lighter jackets and it still feels pretty good especially on the train when it gets very when a lot of people come on and you have to stand up um, one experience was I was had my big winter jacket on had I, I had gloves on but then I started to strip and I was getting too hot on the train had a scarf too and I was standing up and so I started to take off my hat. I was getting lightheaded and really hot. And I took off my hat, I took off my scarf, I took off my gloves, I unzipped my coat. I was like, oh, give me some air. And I just kept feeling more and more lightheaded. And I, I started to slide down the um, the train wall. Because I, I, I needed to sit, but I couldn't tell someone I was pregnant because I didn't look pregnant. But yeah. So I was like, oh, oh, I was like getting really lightheaded. So I had to get off 
at the next stop and sit on a bench. I, I felt like I was going to faint, guys. I fainted before my, like when I was a kid. Felt the same way. I got really lightheaded. You know, that kind of fuzzy type of look. Like, unzipped my jacket, took it off. I still wasn't, I felt like I was still wasn't getting enough air. So I had to exit the train station and go outside. It was, it felt like in the teens or something, but it felt great to me. So that really cooled me down. I didn't have a jacket on or anything. I just went out there. I probably looked so crazy, but uh, I got my relief um, and the lightheadedness went away. I felt like I was going to puke too. So uh, yeah, I stood out there for about a good five minutes and I got back to normal, kind of. But I had to travel to work, and I ended up being like 15 minutes late. But if I didn't get up, I would have been laid out on that train, and there would have been a subway emergency, and train traffic would have been backed up. So yeah, I got off that train as quickly as I could. I got back on the train. I didn't put anything on. I did put my jacket up. I didn't zip it up. But maybe two two stops away from where I had to get off, I started to puke. <laughs> so I did, my, <laughs> I did my trick, started puking in the bag, kept my head down, and I was getting teary-eyed. Oh, yeah. I, I knew people were looking at me like I was crazy. So I kept my head down and walked off and continued to work. Also, my eczema has been acting up. Um, the last time I actually had, like saw eczema on my body, like the dry skin, was when I was a kid. I, I'm on top of my eczema. I use cocoa butter every day. And yeah, I put lotion on every day. And I started to see it on my lower back. Eczema. I'm like, what? Come on now. Well, am I like a little kid? So I had to change my um, body moisture routine. So now I use shea butter and coconut butter mixed together. I, I melted it. I melted it and mixed it and that, now it's, it's not there anymore. <laughs> so yeah, my body has changed drastically. Those were my main symptoms in my first trimester. Um, I felt like I had every symptom under the sun. But now I feel much better, I'm so glad. But another big change I never thought would happen is now I'm a pescatarian. I I crave fish like no other. Um, and my I told you that my boyfriend's a really good cook and he cooked salmon for me one time. He put it in a skillet and yeah, oh my god it was so good. <laughs> I kept craving it, craving it. He made me some shrimp too and I've never been like a fish eater like that. And I craved not so much anymore, but I crave tuna sandwiches. Whoa, like, I loved tuna sandwiches when I was young, but I wanted them so badly. I wouldn't, anything else I ate, it would not satisfy me. I would eat something and still feel like I wanted tuna sandwich. And I'm, oh, and also I never get full. Like, I eat every two hours, maybe even, even more often. I, I just don't get full. <laughs> and so I would mix, Tuna, mayo, put some salt and pepper, toast some bread, and eat it. Oh, that just hit the spot, and my baby was like, yes, mommy, yes, keep it coming. But the thing about eating fish, I have to keep it to, I read that you have to keep it to 12 ounces or less a week um, of the mercury in fish. So I consume the low, low mercury fish, like tuna, salmon, tilapia, shrimp. Even though shrimp doesn't have the best, well, the most sufficient omega-3s, I think that's why I'm really craving fish, because I need those omega-3s. And it's for brain development for the, for the baby. So I think that's why I'm craving it a lot. I don't crave other types of meat, just fish. So I'm not gonna um, resist that craving. It's really big. It's the big.
biggest craving I've had so far. Um, yeah, I used to crave pizza a lot, but fish, I feel like I need it way more. So I'm listening to my body. But after a rare pregnancy, I'm going to go back to being a vegetarian. Because I've never had difficulty um, with cravings before my pregnancy. Not. So, yeah. Fish is in my life right now. Because my baby wants it. So my current symptoms into my second trimester, when we 15, um, I can't eat any spicy foods anymore. <laughs> I can't. My first trimester I could, my second, no way. Um, the minute I start to eat spicy foods, it comes back up. Baby doesn't like it. And I get um, GERD easily if I eat spicy foods too. Just feel like there's a burning sensation right here, even in my upper back. It feels like it's a constant burn, constant burning. And that would make me puke too. So I can't even eat pepper, like table pepper. And also I hiccup every single day. Usually in the morning, like when I roll out of bed, I don't know, it's like a new position. I don't know. And I hiccup for maybe like five hiccups and then it's over. Or if I'm hungry, I'll hiccup five times and it's over. I don't know what that is, but it's every day. And I sometimes I get little sharp pains on the left side of my stomach. Uh, if I move too fast or move too much, like I need to, I just need to sit down and it usually goes away. But yeah, I get some aches and pains. So right now I'm in my 15th week of pregnancy and I plan to do weekly or bi-weekly updates um, to let you know how it's going. On my channel, I am going to make videos about what I eat. I actually show you what I eat, how I eat, how I prepare it, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start working out now and getting back into my workout routine. I'm a very active person. Um, I plan to jog again, do my yoga, go to the gym. I'm pretty sure I want to bike again, but I don't know how safe that is in the city. Maybe I'll just go to the park and ride my bike because I love riding. When it gets warmer, I know I'm going to have to ride. Um, so I will make videos that you can come along with me on my workout. Um, I'll take you on a trip to Baby's RSR. When I go shopping for a baby, I'll show you my um, baby shower, which is going to be in April. So anything I can record and show you guys, I will about my pregnancy. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for upcoming videos and thanks for watching.